the third in the series, as I, as I had said, and um, we'll be looking at uh, life from two different aspects tonight. One is from the natural uh, aspect, natural sciences, and the other aspect is the informational sciences, and I typically uh, can talk uh, with some believability on both of those uh, platforms. The first of the series laid out the groundwork for the series, uh, talking about you know, why, what is science all about and why, what's the biblical basis for studying science. Um, and we pointed out the difference between intelligent design and creationism, where intelligent design is a purely scientific uh, model that you can analyze things without any regard to who the designer is, as opposed to creationism acknowledges first and primary that, that God is the one who did the designing and the creating. Uh, we also pointed out that both evolution and creationism are religious points of view as opposed to scientific points of view. And we looked at several of the scientists who were Bible believers, uh, including the one that is acknowledged as uh, the most uh, famous scientist of all, Isaac Newton, uh, who came up with all kinds of scientific laws, and uh, he spent more time studying the Bible than he did on his scientific endeavors. We also looked at Kepler, who uh, said that science is merely thinking God's thoughts after him. We should acknowledge, as Proverbs 2, 6 does, the Lord gives wisdom, and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. And these scientists who were Christians definitely followed that uh, advice from, from Proverbs so that God can reveal his workings to them. In the last session, two weeks ago, we looked at mass and energy. Um, from science, pseudoscience, uh, the creation of mass and energy from nothing, the oscillating universe, the uh, multi-universe with multiple unseeable strings, and basically came to the, to the conclusion that there is no scientific explanation for the origin of mass and energy of the universe. But the Bible says the, the word of the Lord is powerful, and the amount of energy that it would have taken to create the known universe is something like a five followed by 50, uh, 50 zeros uh, in number of uh, atomic bomb of Hiroshima size uh, that would have been converted the energy into the mass and energy of the universe. And uh, that's not very likely to happen uh, in any case. Tonight we're going to be looking at life and its origin and looking at what science actually knows about uh, the components of life we're going to be looking at a fairly um, superficial way in a lot of respects because uh, there are <laughs> thousands of books that are written on this subject and obviously we're not going to cover it all tonight. Uh, but we're going to be looking at it both from both the natural and also the informational content of life. In the next session, we're going to be looking at evolution, how life changes throughout time. We're going to be looking at the difference between a microevolution, which basically is accepted by everybody, uh, small changes that are inheritable, and macroevolution, the formation of new species uh, and that everything arose from a single life form. And then the last two sessions we'll be looking at the Bible in more detail on some of the scientific uh, insights and, and evidences that, that exist for that. Uh, next slide, please. So the overview of this session is to look at uh, a fairly high level view of uh, the life components at the cellular level. We're not going to look at uh, you know, complete animals in, the, in this, but we're going to be looking at what is life in its most basic form. And then we'll look at some things, um, uh, basically those will illustrate that there is no such thing as a simple life. Um, and that we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully formed, as Psalm 139 says. We'll look briefly at some of the natural um, scenarios for the origin of life and some of the major difficulties with those scenarios. And 
the killer for the natural origin of life information and why it is impossible for information that's in life to arise by natural processes. Um, so that you won't need to know a real deeply understanding of, of life as we get into this, but hopefully it will highlight the fact that all life, and particularly mankind, we are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. And so even if you don't understand some of the details, you can say, wow, that's really complex. Because life is complex. <laughs> and that's basically what I'm talking about, the complexities of life and how those complexities could not arise by undirected natural processes. Next, please. The fundamentals of life involve DNA. Uh, DNA is the molecule of life. There are uh, some 300 trillion cells in the body. Each cell has in it DNA. Um, the DNA in a human, for example, would be about six feet long uh, for one molecule of DNA in a human cell. Now in that human cell, if you took all of the cells together from the body and you strung them out, you would have about 30 billion miles worth of DNA in your body, which is uh, quite a bunch. Uh, the, um, the DNA is made up of what are called bases. These single letters here, the A and the C and the G and the T, those are called bases. And there's only four of them, so that's not very hard to, re to remember. There are four bases. Um, just like in baseball, there are four bases, right? So you can remember that quite easily. Uh, the smallest genome that's known in DNA has over 150,000 of those in each DNA strand. Human DNA has uh, over three, three billion pairs of those bases because they're in a helix. They're, they're strung together. That we have a, a helix here. That's the structure of DNA. And we'll look, about, look at that a little bit. Um, there are approximately 30,000 genes. The genes are sections of DNA that are used for the manufacturing of proteins. Now, proteins are manufactured in the cell. And we'll look at that in just a little bit. But there are more than 100,000 proteins that are manufactured and it's still not known how can we get 100,000 proteins manufactured from only about 30,000 or less genes. And one of the reasons that they can do that is that the codes along the DNA chain are overlapped. Have you ever tried to write, me make meaningful sen sentences, several meaningful sentences, by superimposing the same words and just starting at a different letter in your sentence. Well, that's what life does. It starts at different letters in the DNA chain to make different proteins. It's very, very complex. The things are overlapping and um, um, there are, each protein is approximately 300 amino acids long. Those are the building, basic building blocks and we'll look at that in just a little bit. Some of the proteins are called enzymes. There are over 2,000 enzymes. You've probably heard about enzymes. But what they do is they make reactions take place faster. And for example, some of the enzymes that are involved with life, if you didn't have the enzymes, the reactions would take a trillion years to, to go forth and, and perform the reaction. Now, a trillion years is you know, some 70 times the longest estimated uh, length of time that the universe even has been around. So you know that those things aren't going to happen. When you have an enzyme, an enzyme is something that takes the components, puts them together, has another slot that takes the energy, and so that the actual reaction can take place, so that reaction that would have taken a trillion years without an enzyme takes one hundredth of a second when you have an enzyme. So that makes it possible to make it, you 